Hi everyone, welcome back to New Post today and today let's continue with the TSPSC current affairs for the group 1 mains upcoming examination. I had completed part 1 and part 2 and this is part 3. So let's have a quick review or of the topics I'll be covering today. So the first major topic I'll be covering is about the coal uh, mine acquisition by the Singerini Collieries Limited and apart from that I'll be covering some of the issues between the state of Telangana and the centre as well and how that is leading to, uh, leading to a lot of deal in project implementation and cost escalation and apart from that how the uh, Telangana state is acting proactively to make the state a destination for sustainability mobility solutions. So let's begin with the first issue and that is about the Singerini collieries to step up for coal production. So it has acquired new mines and this is the first time that it has acquired mines outside the state of Telangana. Singerini plays a very important role in acquisition or in coal supply production and also thermal power generation in South India. It's very very close to the Gondwana coal mine area especially with regard to Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra and our own very coal belt is situated in the Godavari Valley that is the Gondwana coal mines and the three districts that is the Karimnagar, Kammam and Varangal are major districts with regard to coal production and, they produ and the mines are related are uh, uh, of the Singarini Collieries Limited. So recently, the Singarini Collieries Limited has acquired the mines uh, in other states such as Odisha. So this is an effort to increase coal production because there is a big mismatch between the demand and supply. Keeping in mind the slew of infrastructure projects and also development works that the state of Telangana is uh, doing and also the role of Singarini Collieries even with regard to the private sector as well. It also it uh, not only provides power but also it provides coal to various other sectors of the uh, industries as well. So let's have a quick review of this development and another feather in the Singerini Collieries hat that is uh, the next issue that I'll be talking about but first with the, with the intention to increase the coal production in the state the Singerini Collieries Committee Limited has started production from the Neni coal mine which is located in Odisha in the Angul district and it has three surface coal mines in Odisha in the current year. Neni will be the first block that uh, the Singerini Collieries will be acquiring outside Telangana and the Neni coal block has let me tell you a total reserves of 340 million tons of very high quality and high grade coal and the company has hinted that its plan is to mine about 10 million tons of coal per year for the next 34 years looking at energy security and also security and sustainability in coal production and availability as well. Now consumption in the country uh, with regard to electricity has increased and this is not doubt, uh, uh, this is definitely without doubt even uh, mostly after the post-pandemic period where the economic uh, activity started to take a boom and accordingly production as led to mismatch between demand and supply and therefore there was a need to acquire new mines and this is the decision and this is the reason that the Singerini Collieries Limited has taken up this uh, F, this uh, initiative. Now the company is starting pro uh, coal production in the Neni coal block from Van Branch, another coal mine that is a VK coal mine in New Godem and Goleti surface coal mine in Belampalli from June and the JKOC expansion of Rompedu mine in Yelandu from July itself. So due to the increase in demand now the SSCL has taken up uh, new 10 coal mines and uh, to increase the coal production to about 850 lakh tons per year within three years. The company has targeted uh, 700 lakh tons this fiscal itself and the company has targeted 100 lakh tons for Neni coal mine in Odisha, 53 lakh tons of VK coal mine, 35 lakh tons from the Goleti surface coal mine and 25 lakh tons for the JKOC expansion Rompedu coal mine in Yelando. Let's have a brief review of the Singerini's colonies because uh, uh, it's an important uh, coal uh, mining company and apart from that even a thermal production com thermal power production company as well. So Singerini uh, Collieries Company Limited has its uh, origin to the pre-independence uh, pre era in 1886. So it is jointly owned presently by the Government of India and Government of Telangana in a stake of 49% of Government of India and 51% stake of Telangana. So it is a joint company. The company was initiated as the Hyderabad or the Deccan Company Limited by the uh, by the British and they acquired mining rights in 1886 to exploit coal mines uh, in the Yelandu area. The present company was incorporated in 1920 when the government came up with the Hyderabad Companies Act as a public limited company with the name of the Singerini Collieries Company Private Limited. 
sorry, limited. In the year 1945, the state of Hyderabad, that is the Nizam's dominion, took over the Singaranese Colliery's Company Limited by acquiring all the stocks of the company and thereby continuing to ma its mandate of mining coal from the entire Godavari Valley coal field. In 1948, with the annexation of the Nizam's dominion by the Union of India, SCCL became a government company and from 1960 onwards, Government of India participated in the SCCL with 49% equity. Now, it currently operates 29 uh, underground mines and 19 open, over, uh, open cast mines located in six di uh, districts of Telangana, which are grouped into three coal producing regions. The districts are the Komarambi, Manchirial, Pedapalli, Jaishankar Bhupalli, uh, Badradi, Kotagudam, and the Kamam. And for administrative convenience, these coal mines are divided into three regions the Belampalli region, consisting of the Komarambi and the Manchirial districts, and the Ramagundam region, coming under Pedapalli and the Jaishankar Bhupalli districts, and the Kotagudam region coming under the Badradri Kotagudam and the Kamam district. Now, the reason for the uh, Naini mine being acquired by the SSCL is the is because in tune with the company's plan to minimize the gap between the demand and supply and also to have uninterrupted coal supply for its own power plant at Jaipur in Telangana state. Now, the SSCL, let me tell you, is the only coal producing company in the southern India with the owner's task of uh, responsibility of meeting large portion of coal demand in the south India. Further, it also uh, need, uh, there is a need for enhanced of the coal production to meet the requirement of the Telangana state in particular and India in general in view of the power demand in the state and in order to fulfill the coal requirement of the thermal power plant in the state, SCCL is taken up the steps to enhance the production. Presently, the SCCL is also apart from the thermal power plant, it is supplying coal to major power utilities in South India and has also fuel, fuel supply as also fuel supply agreements with TS Genco, AP Genco, KPCL and Maha Genco for supply of coal and the tune of 27 7 million metric tons per annum. Apart from this, SSCL is also supplying coal to the captive power plants, heavy water plants, cement factories, sponge giant factories, apart from 2.0 million tons to other non fuel supply agreements customers as well. So, SSCL is also supplying coal to the e-auction platform and has a mandate to sell 10% of the production through e-auction. As of now, there is a huge demand between the demand or supply of coal and this is why the SSCL has taken up this initiative to acquire this Neni coal plant in Odisha of Angul region. So, another feather in the cap of SSCL and now it is the one, number one thermal power station in the country. Now, the Singareni thermal power station in Pegadalapalli of Jaipur, Jaipur, uh, Jaipur in Manchirial district, uh, which is run by the SCCL, is again ranked number one among the top 25 thermal power plants and this by our very own Central Electricity Authority. It also has the highest plant load factor at about 19.50%. It is surpassed uh, NTPC Korba, which stands at second in Chhattisgarh, NTPC Samrauli at uh, UP, that is third, Vindya plant at MP, Bakreshul plant at West Bengal and Rihan plant in UP. It has overtaken also some, it has surpassed and overtaken some private plants such as Adani, Reliance and NTPC as well. This is the second time in the financial year that the Singareni thermal power plant has achieved this position, surpassing the plant load factor of around 250 uh, public and private thermal power plants in the country and the rest of the 12, 25 is thermal power plants by the Central Electricity Authority. Let me tell you no other public and private thermal power plant from the two Telugu states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh have found a place in the top 25 except for the Singareni thermal power plant. The company is also working up to set up 800 megawatt of thermal power plant very soon and the Singareni thermal power plant is a, therm a coal fired thermal power plant in Pegadapalli in village in Manchirial district of Telangana. The power plant an installed capacity of 1200 megawatt of two units of 600 megawatt each and it is op operated by the Singarini Scholaries Company Limited. The coal mining is, uh, it is a government owned company, I told you, which is, has the equal stake, which has a 51% stake of Telangana government and 49% stake of the government of India and it is owned jointly. It is named after the village of Singareni in the Badradri Kottagudam district of Telangana state. And this is about the Singareni's uh, acquiring of new coal uh, mines and also uh, achievement by being the first top thermal power station in South India. Now let's go to the another most important news and that is 
about the evolving e uh, sustainable mobility solution system or the ecosystem especially sustainable uh, mobility with regard to electric vehicles now there is a, a large large uh, developments with regard to electric vehicles in the state of telangana the government has bring up uh, as brought up a slew of initiatives and is also taking up many many initiatives to attract investments in the state and not only that but also providing a very comfortable environment for production of the electric vehicles uh, system in the state as well so the electric vehicle sector in the state appears to be gaining a lot of steam in as electric vehicle companies are foraging into telangana in 2020 21 five popular ev uh, companies with a total investment of 5000 crore have signed agreements with the state government to set up their manufacturing units in the state now this is because a thank big thanks to the electric vehicle and the energy story uh, storage policy of the telangana government which is very creating a very very friendly environment with regard to the ev companies regardless of the size uh, in the state as well so the ev policy has initiated a fill up to the electric vehicle ecosystem in the state it is promoting the use of electric vehicles on a large scale petrol prices prices so the reason for the uh, for the boosting of the electric vehicles is because of the rise in petrol prices and also sustainable environment goals apart from that we're doing away dealing with climate change mitigation and impact as well so this uh, has pushed up the demand for electric vehicles not only in telangana in india but also the globe as well and government of india has a dedicated fame scheme for boosting of the electric vehicles ecosystem in the country as well now under the telangana policy the state government is providing subsidies incentive support for infrastructure manufacturing to the electric vehicle companies it is also offering special power tariffs for the sector as well tax and the registration fee exemption on the electric vehicles to a certain extent and also discounted interest rates encouraging the state uh, state transport department to opt for electric bus as well now the Tel telangana state renewable energy development corporation is setting up charging units and battery stations all across the state in a large uh, number almost 110 charging stations are coming up and have been developed to this date so apart from this there are certain initiatives that have been taken up by the telangana state especially with regard to attracting of investments policies discussions etc number one is the hyderabad e mobility week which was held in february this event showcased the widest collection of electric vehicles charging infrastructure and energy storage solution and hosted also the nation's first ever electric single seater racing show in hyderabad the second one is the case that is the connected automated uh, autonomous shared electric startup challenge by the telangana government which invited the indian startups to showcase innovative viable and scalable solutions for connected autonomous and shared electric mobility the city also hosted the first ever ev expos in hyderabad called as the hyderabad the e moto show in 2023 february at the high tech city ground and this was the, it showcased the widest collection of electric vehicles charging infrastructure and energy storage solution the show also seen the launch of many many uh, top notch e vehicles by automobile companies like mahindra uh, launched its uh, uh, peninfarina batista stellantis nv launched its citroen ec3 car india's first unique ev skateboard mula by urban sphere along with the launch of quantum energies electric vehicle called as plasma was launched on this occasion another most important in, uh, okay uh, event that was organized is the rally hyderabad now it is the first of the uh, kind ev rally where thousands of ev enthusiasts will be riding two three or four wheelers and electric buses to spread the message about sustainable mobility Mobility Next Hyderabad was held at the Hyderabad International Convention Center, and it showcased global leaders, eminent academics, policy makers, discussing the future of sustainable mobility solutions. In February, Hyderabad uh, launched the Hyderabad E Prix, the first ever Formula E racing event in India, and it took uh, uh, it took uh, it took place in two days. The Formula E is a premier electric single-seater racing series in the country, uh, governed by the Federation International. d automobile or fia so these are the certain events that are organized by the government to make uh, uh, make 
uh, make electric vehicles usage more famous and also calling the public to participate and also uh, calling the inter attention of uh, companies, uh, the electric vehicle companies and also policy makers as well. So increasing the popularity of electric vehicles. These are uh, the now I'll be telling you about the few electric vehicle companies that have come to Telangana in 2020-21 who are setting up their manufacturing units in Telangana, not only bringing inf investments but also opening job opportunities, not only direct but also indirect having forward and backward linkages as well. Printon Electric. Now, this is a US-based company that has signed an MOU with the state government to set up an electric vehicle manufacturing plant with the investment of 2,100 in under the National Investment Manufacturing Zone in Zahirabad. Let me tell you, it will provide employment to 2,000 people, the company says. Next is Light Auto GmbH. It is a Germany-based company and it is known for production of magnesium-based alloy components for the automobile industry. It is going to invest 1500 crore in a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility and it will create 9000 direct and indirect employment in the state. Third is Grafton Motors, EV Mater Grafton Motors adopted an electric bike under the brand name called as Quanta and is uh, planning to come up with a greenfield investment for manufacturing the bike with an investment of 150 crore by the year end in Hyderabad. This Hyderabad based EV company would employ 3000 crore people in the next, uh, 3000 people in the next two years. The next one is One Moto India, another EV brand One Moto India is planning to manufacture, uh, to set up its manufacturing unit again in Zahirabad and this British mobility com uh, committee, uh, company assigned an MOU with the state government to invest 250 crore and it will provide direct and indirect employment to 500 direct jobs and 2,000 indirect jobs in the state. And the last is Baliti. The California-based entity is going to set up a factory in Telangana in partnership with the Hyderabad's Gaia Motors and the deal between the two companies is going to pump in 2,000 crore of investment in the state. Apart from this, there have, uh, have been certain other investments coming in the form of lithium iron cell manufacturing by the Telangana government, by the Amararaja factory, which is going to set up a lithium cell gigafactory with a capacity of 16 gigawatt and a battery package uh, pack assembly unit of 5 gigawatt. It will come up in Divity Palli and create an employment of 4,500 people. Apart from this, the Amararaja plant, TS also will be one of the few uh, states in the world to host the lithium cell Giga factory. Amaraja Batteries has incorporated a new battery subsidy called as Amaraja Advanced Cell Technologies, and this is going to come up in the Tirupati unit as well. Apart from this, lithium has recently been found in reserves in Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Now, this is a very, very big possibility for mining itself of lithium starting in the country itself. Therefore, larger availability to the uh, companies who are setting up lithium batteries in the country as well. And this is a very good news to India, which mostly imports all of its lithium. Uh, its lithium needs. Telangana also, also backed one more mega project in the electric vehicle and energy storage solution sector. Agar Technologies, which is a subsidiary of the Atero subsidy, will invest 600 crore for manufacturing of lithium batteries and cells in Telangana. And now the state, uh, Telangana State Renewable Energy Development Corporation uh, uh, has said that 150 electric vehicles and charging stations would be available in Hyderabad soon. And the last issue which has made news is the Center state relation now between Telangana and the center. So we are dependent on the centers for grants, also with regard to sharing of taxes, the GST revenues, etc., and also certain loans as well. However, recently, we, however, because of the three lists in the Constitution Union list, state list, and concurrent list, certain of the projects have to take permission from the central government. And this is where the Telangana government is facing an issue with the center. This is one of the very, uh, very few issues that have made news with regard to the center state relations, especially with regard to Telangana and the state center relations as well. So let's have a quick review of what this issue is about. Now, uh, the, the delay in completion of many, many of the irrigation projects in the state has led to a cost escalation. And one of the reason is because of the delay in the approval of the projects to Telangana from the central government. The CAG itself has pointed out that there were as many as 24 projects that were going on in the state and some as old as 1983. And the cost for this was 1 lakh crore, which has increased to a whopping 2.21 lakh crore for these projects, increasing the financial burden only on the state. Delay of these projects is not only increasing the cost of, uh, of the project, but also deprive the state of the economic benefits that will come because of these irrigation projects. And apart from the funds borrowed for the project, servicing the debt also becomes a very big hurdle. The state government has once again pointed out that because of the inordinate delays in granting of clearances to various proposed and ongoing projects citing the COVID 
court cases and other excuse these are resulting into massive cost escalation now though the state government has also produce uh, produce various detailed project reports for various projects on the godavari and the krishna a large number of projects are awaiting the approval of the center mostly even dealing as old as 2 years now due to the clarification being sought by the center and delay for granting permissions it has taken over 1.5 years to get these clearances following this the cost project a cost of the project has escalated to almost 25 to 30 percent which is a very very big burden on the state state has also uh, expressed its anguish last year or towards the central water commission for delaying the clear, uh, clearances in a half a dozen of irrigation projects though it has given detailed project reports for this it was only after the chief minister's intervention that the union ministry of jal shakti last number created three important projects that are the mukteshwar chinna kaleshwaram project the jayshankar bupalli the chinna korata balage in adilabad and the chautapal hanmantar reddy lift irrigation project in nizambad however the sitaram sagar samaka sagar and the modi gunta vagu projects are still waiting waiting the central water commission clearance and also a detailed project report has been submitted for kaleshwaram lift uh, irrigation scheme to the center to, to get the permission for the lift irrigation but however this is still pending and this is one of the major issues between the center of the state how it is having a repercussion on this cost escalation only bringing a double burden to the state finances and i hope these three uh, four most important issues were really helpful to you all i shall see you in the next part that's part 4 and until then very happy learning